about this it's not a big deal this is just evidence for you because I'm gonna let you get this file and you can stick it on your blog so we're rolling okay yeah Essentially allows you to put hold the camera in a, in a steady position, whereas it would be harder if you were just doing it by hand and the camera would be most likely shaking if it was in the pit. Um, precision using the grip, you can get a smoother shot and a more precise um, angle or direction of what you actually want compared to the camera where it's cool. Yeah. And um, being slow, a lot of people um, can, can say that um, using a tripod would slow you down because you have to. And I'm doing all, but with doing that, it's going to force you to think of all of your creative ideas. So, if panning left is going to be the right, if panning left is going to be the right choice rather than panning right, or things like that. Try and put it in um, The top bit is called the camera clip, where the plate can be taken off and it has to be placed on the bottom of the camera and screwed in. It's also known as a um, camera mount. Um, these are the, the tripod um, cover grips. You can loosen them like these to um, increase tension or decrease tension, but also using the control direction of the camera. Extendable loads, um, it has clips on it, so the bottom clip will extend the last one, the second one will um, extend the second one, the first one will extend the first one. That allows you to essentially control the height of the camera and the tripod. And spirit level. The spirit level is essentially a little piece of liquid with, with a bubble in it and allows you to um, gauge if the tripod's straight. So now we've got a series of videos of us operating the tripod, opening the tripod. This is just me. I didn't talk in this video, but. So it's just me unclipping it, all of them, and sliding it out. And I'm re the plate. So as you can see here, the bubble of the spirit level is in the, in the circle, which means the tripod centre isn't level, if that makes sense. So what I'll go about doing here is I will go about leveling off the tripod legs so that the bubble of the spirit level is in the centre. This tension grip makes the camera go from left to right after loosening it. So when the filmer wants to get there at his best sight, he tightens it and even at the tightest or less than tightened, you can move it left to right and it slows it down because it's more tight. If you loosen it, it makes it faster because there's less strength on the camera. And after we've done that, to tighten it back. These tension grips depend on when you're filming, you can tilt the camera left, tilt it all the way right, or put it in the center. Then when it's in the center, or where you want it to be, tighten this tension grip so that the camera is safe and it won't fall down. This one, if you loosen it, allows it to pan back 
and fun and handsome. And it can also be fast or slow. And then tying it back in the floor. Um, I just want to clarify with um, what Andy said there, I think he made a mistake. When, he, when it was going forward and back, it wasn't panning, panning, then you're not moving left or right. That's a uh, tilt. And here, before you've got that mounting the camera on, you have to make sure that the actual tripod um, base, the mount for the tripod, is level. So keep that in there. Zero degrees. And it's level, ready, ready to be mounted. Actually, under here, you come down here, there's actually a second balance here. So I'm going to make sure that the arrow is on zero. And now, the camera should be completely balanced. It's completely centered now. Okay, so what we're going to go about doing now is mounting the camera onto the tripod. So as you saw here, I released a lock here on this tripod. It has a second lock, which I like to remove the lock of the mount. Removing the camera now, and then on the lock here, it has um, arrows pointing to where the lenses should be pointing. Um, so it says lens two. That's bad camera etiquette. I've got my two fingers. Don't don't do that because you'll drop the camera and you'll home school lots of money. Two here. And lens one here. So I'm going to go about mounting the camera. It says that the lens should be pointing this way on the camera. So I've got tightening this and that. In some cases, I have a space for a pointer to twist on. A space for a pointer getting twisted. In this case, I'll lock. Make sure it's nice and um, tight. And now we're going to be mounting the camera on that way. That way? This way. Make sure it fits in. Go back in. Back here. Make sure it locks. It's past the second lock. Now the second, first lock is on. And the camera is now mounted onto the tripod. Under normal circumstances, it wouldn't still be shaking like that, but I was being heavy handed with the camera. A somewhat exaggerated version of the free hand, <clears throat> as you can see, using a tripod is adventitious. And this is us. You need a website. Why not do it yourself? Turn your volume up on the, uh, the amp. Thank you. An exposure 
is basically taking a picture and the settings that you're using to take that picture so that it looks the way you want. And that's what a correct exposure is, a picture that you've taken that looks the way you want. So it doesn't necessarily have to look the same as what your eyes are seeing for it to be correct to you. But in this case, we are going to use that as an example. Um, based on what my eyes are seeing, I'm going to set an exposure of a scene and just kind of walk you through uh, the options you have to change to create a correct exposure and things to watch out for as you do that. So let's just real quick, I'm in um, Scene Intelligent Auto. I'm on the green A. We're just going to stay here for just a second. I'm going to press the Live View button. And here's the scene we're looking at. We have some flowers. And for those of you who have watched my other videos, you know right now I'm sitting under uh, this big skylight. It's an overcast day, so I have nice diffuse light coming in. These, uh, this jar of flowers is at the edge of that skylight. And beyond that, it starts to get pretty shadowy fairly quickly. Uh, you can see there's a ruler and there's something white back there. We're going to be able to see those things in a moment. But here's what the camera judges to be a correct exposure of this image. And it's pretty close. But, you know, you, the camera doesn't always decide what's best. And in this case, to talk about all of our options that we have to change, I want to switch to manual. And so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to rotate the dial to him. And you should follow along. Feel free to follow along. I think this is going to be worth uh, a lot more worth your time if you have your camera in hand. And it doesn't matter if you have a Canon T4i or a Nikon. The, the general uh, settings that we are talking about are identical for all of these cameras. So here I am in manual mode, and very nicely across the top now, I have the three options that I want to talk about when you're setting an exposure. Your first is your shutter speed. That is the length of time that your shutter remains open when you take a picture. Right now, uh, it is set on 1 500th of a second, because last time I was taking pictures, that's what I had it set on. And it remembers that, and it keeps that. Corey, how long is the video? It's very long. Okay. Next All right, uh, we got... Did you, were you able to sort of like, can you pricey anything that, it's, that it said on there? Pardon? Can you sort of like condense anything that it said? Sum it up in a few, what exposure is? It's uh, basically like getting the picture you want using the settings. Like if you want it proper clear and you, like good quality, you can edit the settings. More, from what I gather, the exposure is basically, basically controlling how much light gets yeah. the sensor of yeah. the camera yeah. using a. Uh, yeah. Really. Yeah, that, that's that's what it is. We one of the things we haven't covered. We've covered sound. We've covered tripods. We've covered focus and white balance. The one thing we haven't covered is exposure, and that's a whole thing on its own. And obviously, we, we need to talk about that. And it's as Corey said, it's literally how much light is coming into the camera. So if you have too much light coming into the camera, what's, what do you think is going to happen? Overexposed. Overexposed, and how's that going to look? Really yeah, it's going to look white. It's going to white out. Okay. If you have not enough light coming in, what's going to happen? Dark. It's going to be too dark. So exposure is all, it's that, it comes from what, back in the days of um, film, old fashioned film, and it was how long you exposed the film for. So it's, 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 it's actually how much light you expose into the camera. But that's a separate issue. But thank you very much for doing that, because that, that's actually, we've we got a video there. Right, okay, guys, what do, any questions about tripods? Do, do we think we sort of know about tripods now? Yeah. I mean, I thought that was a really good presentation. You're very thorough. I've actually learned something from that, some of the stuff on the tripod. So it's a really good presentation. Round of applause, I think. Um, yeah. I recommend, because um, tripod is a physical thing, I'd say the best experience you can get is actually using the tripod at hand. Because after, after two days of being able to use it, it was straight yeah. away. Like when you first started using it, how did you find it? Difficult. Yeah, it's cumbersome, yeah. isn't it? They're heavy, they're cumbersome. Sometimes, I mean, there's so many little things all over them, controls, that you don't, you're trying to move something and something doesn't move. So as Corey says, if you get really comfortable with using it, just use it a lot and things will slot into place. Yeah. Uh, what would you say was the, 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 I mean, you obviously got really used to it at the end, but what was the, initially the trickiest bit? Um, leveling off using yeah. the um, yeah. right. Straight. Okay. Straight. Okay. I mean, that is not a brilliant. Did you play with the gimbal? Yes, but we're, we're about tightening it. We just move it again. Right. Okay. Okay. There's another tripod. Um, you know what Corey was saying about leveling. Why do you need it level? 
Why don't you just set it up so it sort of looks level? So like, um, the video quality, if you level it, it'll be like it's professional. Yeah, it will look professional, at least you know it's level. But if, I mean, for instance, I've set this up. It's not a brilliant shot, but it's a fairly level shot. I've got it at an angle, so you can't really see whether it's level or not. It does the job. Why can't I just do that? Why don't you just do that? Are there times where that's not going to be adequate? I mean, you could probably set this up and get quite a professional looking shot. I haven't leveled it. In fact, if I look at my spirit level, actually by coincidence, it happens to be level. But it may, it, it may not be. I didn't look at it. What, there are certain circumstances where it desperately needs to be level. And I think these guys actually did some of the stuff in their demonstrations. Is it when you're focusing? Not when you're focusing. Um, especially when you're using visual effects. When you're, when, you're, when you're panning. That's when what happens. Because if it's at a level, when you, when you go to pan, it's just going to go downhill. It's going to do this and the horizon's going to go all weird. So you, if you're doing any kind of panning shot, it's got to be level. So that whatever your the horizon or whatever you look at is going to stay perfectly still instead of looking like you're dropping off the side of the world, which would happen. So it's it's a really good technique if to use. If you get it level, then you you've got no problems, wh whatever you use the camera for. The reason there's another tri that tripod is quite cumbersome. There's another tripod. Maybe it's not working properly, um, and it's got it's a slightly bigger and heavier to use tripod. But it's got a thing called a gimbal, which is this quick release thing underneath. Yeah, and if you twist it, it rock, the whole thing rocks through 180 degrees. And that you undo it, move it around till you get it level, and lock it up. So it's just like one shot at getting it level instead of the all the little controls. But I thought that was a really good presentation. I've learned something from that, and that's something we should stick up on Study Space because it's a really good guide. Yeah. Um, was there another question? Any other questions? One other, just, yeah, sorry, sorry. You see the, uh, like, how to set up the tripod? Yeah. Are there tutorials on YouTube that shows you as well? Not, well, there would be on YouTube, yeah. but we now have a Stanmore College tutorial. But as Corey says, best way to do it is to actually handle it for yourself, and you'll really get in touch with it. Um, one thing I was going to say, just on a, you were, you, your demonstration videos, the very first one, you were, you were concentrating on the tripod, but technically... Could you, can you get that your very first video? Could you try and get it up for us? Oh, the first one of your of you guys demonstrating it, opening a tripod, I think it was. Right. Yeah. Just just pause it. What, how, what's that shot? I mean, this isn't a criticism of your presentation, it's really good, but if we were going to give some constructive criticism to that shot, is there any problems with that shot? The lighting. Light, lighting, what's the problem with the lighting? It's a bit dark. Yeah. It's a bit dark. Unfortunately, because you stood under the tree and there's all the light behind, you, it's called backlight, and obviously the camera you're using has responded to that. This is exposure. Mm -hmm. The camera's done an automatic exposure, and it's, oh, the, we've, I've got plenty of light. But what it doesn't realise is, it's not, it hasn't got a brain, that the subject we're interested in, which is core in the tripod, is too dark. So you could actually, with exposure on the camera, do something on the camera which lets less light in, and then it's going to actually focus more on you. Um, or the other thing is, maybe if you'd have stood the other way round, with the sun shining on you, you wouldn't have had a problem. But anyway, that, that's small, small things. Very good presentation. Well done, guys.